but just being uh, playing instead because you're going to tour the the, the Highlands again this this summer. Uh, I saw on your website. Mm -hmm. um, touring in such a place does it give an, an other maybe aesthetic value to the things you play, being maybe in smaller venues in such an environment. So how do you experience that? Yeah, I, that's. I find that really interesting. It does. It totally adapts. It, you know, it dictates what I will, how I will perform and be received. I guess uh, it's a. They're very intimate gigs, but they're also. There's no. What what's, what was so fun about them the first time round was there's no feeling of kind of separation between audience and performer I guess uh, it's a very honest way of playing music it's like you're playing music in someone's living room and you might pass the guitar to the person on your right and I never thought I'd like that because I I'm quite pers in a way quite personal about my music and I don't like to sit in a room with lots of other people yeah. But for some reason, at a gig, it feels okay to do that, and it, this is somewhere in between. Yeah. Because what kind of clubs uh, did you play there, and are you going to play there? And can you maybe describe that for, for us? So. Yeah, well, uh, my my favourite place, which is on the Isle of Mull, is in a little village called Tobinori, and that's in an art centre there, really really beautiful art centre that does a lot with sort of you know com music community, mm. and uh, we play a uh, pottery cafe, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's fun, it's different. Yeah. It's nice. Because what is your living situation, Where, at what, in which place do you live at, uh, at this moment? I live in London. Yeah. Do you consider uh, moving up to Scotland? Or? Yeah, I've yeah. considered it a hundred times. I've said I'll do it a couple of times, <laughs> but I never have. No, I, like, I, like, I love London, but it's, uh, it's What keeps much. you there at this moment? I guess my I'm because I'm hardly ever there. You know, my friends keep me there. My my uh, yeah. Well, uh, the last few years it went very fast with your uh, uh, career in music. Um, looking back, uh, you, you you said from, uh, when you're listening to your first album, it's like listening to your little sister. But um, can you say for yourself how being into music has has changed you, or maybe hasn't changed you? I don't know how it's changed me because I don't know any different how music specifically has changed me. But um, but I'm I'm just uh, like everyone else. I'm just five years older than I was when I wrote that first album, and and uh, no wiser and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, trying just as hard, I think. So I don't know. Just sort of only only age makes me different. Hmm. Um, look, at, looking at the yeah the very first steps that you made into music. If you look back on it now, how, how did you experience that that back that back then? Was it surprisingly, or was it just let let it happen, or how did it went for you back then? I think when I started, I mean when I started playing music, I. I was doing my own gigs and then very shortly after that I joined a band called Know in the Whale. And I struggled so much with my own gigs with nerves and stuff. And I loved every second of being in Know in the Whale. I loved the music and I loved that I wasn't, you know, no, no amount of, you know, no weight rested on my shoulders. And it was just the funnest thing and we, you know, we had no money. We were doing as many tours as possible. My gigs, and they, they, some of them were playing with me and I was playing with them. And it was just the, you know, scummiest, most wonderful time. And that's what, you know, that was my, my quite real first step into music and the job that I do. And I couldn't do that anymore. I, you know, I, <laughs> I dread getting back in a van and stuff like that, but that was, you know, I'm glad I, I did my little bit of Jews, you know, mm. playing the, the, the crappy venues and, yeah, whatever, it was fun. Mm. 